All right, welcome again to Riding Mower King, where it's snowblower season. And this is snowblower number two for that person that uh, is kind of laid up. So I'm going over his equipment and getting it ready. And uh, we're going to see if this starts. We're going to check it out, see what all it needs to make it serviceable. And um, hopefully we'll look at a, a couple key things that you should always check when you're going over a snowblower like this. So we'll see if we can get this thing started. It's got gas in it. It's got a, a valve on the bottom of the gas tank. So we're going to see what happens here. And I did already check the oil when I first brought it in the garage. Okay, well, the gas has been turned on already. And we'll set the choke here. Put the throttle up. Hit the primer a few times and it's going to magically just start up. Well, that's enough of that. Now, I was told the electric start works. It probably works about like it did on the last one, where it worked after I worked on it. Well, that was going to take a lot of pulling. Well, it's running. It starts, but it doesn't quite sound right. I think we're going to have to work on the carburetor a little. Well, it does work. A little noisy in here with the door closed. Seems like I think we're going to take the, the bowl off the carburetor. Seems to have a little bit of issue there. It, it kept wanting to die out. Like the uh, the main jet might be a little clogged up. Maybe there's some, some stuff laying in the bottom of the fuel bowl that shouldn't be there. But on this one, it's right here underneath. It's not like the new ones where you got to take a lot of things off. We'll take this the heater box off just so we can see what we're doing. And we're gonna check the belts. We're gonna take this cover off here. You have to check the drive belts. And uh, we'll probably look at the wheel for the friction disc because uh, you know they get, they get wore down, they get chewed up. So we don't wanna have a, a situation where it doesn't move. So we're gonna be looking at that. So we're gonna look at the carburetor and we're gonna get it hopefully running perfect. The spark plug's pretty rusty. So we're going to pull that out and uh, while the spark plugs out, I'm going to make sure that the valves are closing all the way because on these here, the, the valve seats, they sink in the head a little bit sometimes and then your valves don't actually close and it, it, it almost sounded like that when it first started up. So we're going to, we're going to look in there. You can usually do that without pulling the head off. So it looks like for this, a 5 16 socket and a Phillips screwdriver should get us to where we can see the carburetor. So we'll have to uh, get the choke knob off. And that should just pop right off here. Screwdriver would actually be better to get behind here. There we go. We got the choke knob off. So this one here, we got this wire. It actually has a connector there on the other end. This is a this is a kill wire. This won't make it run, but this will keep it from running. That's why you have to have a key in. If you don't connect this wire back up, you don't need to put the key in. But I believe this key is a safety feature because 
if this is sitting in your garage, a kid could figure out how to start this thing. So they make it so it needs a key so that if the, you know, if this is hooked up correctly and you don't have the key in there, it's not going to start no matter what anybody does. So you always want to make sure that you hook this wire back up if there's any chance of a, a child coming into your garage. Whether it's the neighbor, grandchild that visits once a year, but that, that's what that's for. Well, right here, the carburetor looks pretty dirty in there, but that's on the outside, so that's really not going to affect the way it runs on the outside. So let's get this bowl off of here. And the size of this bolt head usually is a half inch. Well, the gas looks clean. It looks clear. But what you really want to look for is to see that you only have one liquid coming out of there, not that uh, your ethanol gasoline has separated. Well, that doesn't look particularly bad. We're still going to clean it. But that doesn't look real bad. Sometimes you can save the gasket on these. Sometimes it just comes apart. There you can see it. It really doesn't look bad. It's got a little bit of dirt in there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of stuff that's laying in there. But overall, it really doesn't look bad. The float doesn't seem like it's sticking at all. So I'm going to take a small wire brush and clean all this dirt around here. Some of that's probably stuck on there. It looks almost like cork, but this is a rubber gasket, so it's not going to be cork, but it looks like it. So we're going to clean that real good. So now we're all nice and clean in there. So on this older model here, this looks like it's an actual idle mixture screw. It's got a little cap on it. So we are gonna, we're gonna take this out. On the older, older ones, this was actually adjustable. This one looks like it may be just ports. Like it's your idle mixture. Yeah, this one's screwed in tight. So this one's not gonna be adjustable. This is just gonna have a lot of holes in it. Or a couple holes. Yeah, this one is really just a port or a jet. So on here, this here is your main jet. If it's in focus here. This here is your main jet, this hole in the center. That's the gas comes through there for full throttle and idle still comes through there, but very little. This hole right here. This hole right here, see if I can, I'll put an arrow on the screen, but that hole right there, that is your idle jet. And that's what the fuel has to go through when the throttle's closed all the way. And even at full speed, it, the fuel still has to go through there because even at full speed, the throttle's closed almost all the way. So it goes through there and then it also has to go through here. And this here, it goes through this little hole here to get into the airstream. And these also get dirty here. And that's very, very, very little. That, that hole is actually smaller than this one here. Now for this little one and the, the big one in the center, these torch tip cleaners are really the ticket. You just got to get the right one. And for the idle circuit, it's usually the smallest one, which normally is going to be the one that's bent up the most. Now, 
So this here should be the, the smallest one. So we're good on that one. And this one down in here, this is a pretty big hole. This one isn't isn't a problem on this. And we're going to spray that. Now this is probably too big to go through this one. Yeah, it's too big to go through that one. So when I've got to clean one of these, there's a little hole in the end. Right in the end of that is a little hole that's connected to the hole on the side. Yes. Oh, look at that. So this is, this one goes through that hole. And it's only got to go to that hole in the center there. It's only got to reach to there. But if this is not clean... The engine is definitely going to surge, and it may not even not idle anything less than full full idle speed. If you slow the idle down, it may not even run at all if this is not open. So we got the idle circuit open in the main jet. We got the idle circuit open here. I'm going to get rid of that spider. And I'm going to spray a little bit in here because there's other holes in here that the fuel has to flow through. So hopefully that takes care of that. If it doesn't, then we blow some air through there. But hopefully that's going to be good enough. So now we'll put this back in here. And now this one's not an adjustment screw, so we're just going to tighten it down so it doesn't come out. Because it was tight when we started. And now we're going to Spray a little carb cleaner through our main jet. So we're going to block the other side. First, we're going to find the idle jet. There we go. Right in here. There we go. Now we're going to put this all back together. Now the bottom of this bowl has two different levels. And your float is low on one side and high on the other. So put this part here, the high part on the inside, put that where your pivot is, back where your needle valve is, and put this part here where the float hangs down lower. And in this case, it would be this way. Then you want to make sure that it's up all the way, that it's square. So you can screw this little brass fitting back in here without, without it getting cross-threaded, because uh, that would be a big problem. Still sounds like it's just pushing air. I have to let it fill up the carburetor. All right, we got some gas there now. So let's see what happens here. It's still cold yet.
All right, the engine seems like it's getting pretty good now that it's getting warmed up a little bit. So I think we're going to leave that alone. We're going to put the cover back on, and then we're going to pull out the spark plug later after it cools down. So next we're going to look at the belts. So now luckily when this was operating, it sounded pretty quiet. You could barely hear the auger going around. And that's a good sign because there's a bearing down there on the main shaft that goes to the front. And uh, those bearings go bad on a regular basis. And that would be a big job. You have to separate the, the two sides of the snowblower. And uh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole video itself to do that. So we're going to look at these belts. So here we can see this belt. This one runs the auger, the blower part in the front. And from what I can see, it looks pretty good. When, when these get older, they're, they're missing all kinds of pieces. And, you know, they get to the point where they do actually break eventually. So if we engage this handle a little bit, that should take the brake off. Because the other end of this lever down here is a brake that goes against that pulley. So when you let go of the handle, that should stop really quick. So if we do that, we should be able to rotate this belt before it gets tight on both the pulleys. Just like that there. So we can rotate that around and we can look at another part of the belt. Because there could be a chunk missing at one spot and it, you know if it's on the bottom you just won't see it so yeah that belt looks pretty good it doesn't even look like it's all that old so i think we're going to be good on that one and the other one is spring loaded all the time and even this belt actually looks pretty good so he must have changed these in in the last couple of years because i really don't see too much of an issue with either of these belts And from up here, I can actually see that drive wheel. So we don't even have to take the cover off. And that drive wheel looks like it's been changed already too. From what I can see up here. But right there is the drive wheel. Let's see here. If we can get this to, to cooperate a little bit. But that there is the drive wheel, and it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So that rides right against that pulley there. And uh, the engine makes that pulley spin. It drives the belt, makes that pulley spin. And that, that wheel goes left to right. It goes from the center towards the outside on one side, and that's going to be forward. You get all the different speeds depending on where that tire, that, that rubber wheel is. And then for reverse, it goes past center to the other side. And then it, it, of course, is going in the opposite direction because it's on the other side of that wheel. But that's what actually makes the, uh, the wheels turn, is that rubber disc, rubber-coated disc, going against that, the face of that pulley. So we can put this cover back on here now because everything in there looks pretty good. None of those pulleys are able to be lubricated. There's no grease fittings, they're all sealed bearings. So we, we're gonna put this cover back on. So what we're gonna look at now is the movement for the speed control. This one, not too bad. It's a little noisy, I think that's the spring. We're gonna lube all that up. That's gonna be quiet when we're done. But sometimes that handle is hard to move to change your speeds. So we're gonna look at what causes that and we're gonna even lubricate this one a little bit while we're in there. So if, if your speed control, if your speed control is hard to move, this is the part you wanna watch. So here we can see, this is our friction disc. Well, this is the friction disc. This is the drive wheel. And we rotate these tires. We can see that wheel looks pretty good. There's no chunks missing out of it. It pretty much engages right away. Th this here actually moves, this tilts when you pull on the cable. Ah, 
that's the blower side. So you pull on the cable and that, that, that raises, well, here it's raising, otherwise it goes to, it goes towards the friction wheel. And that's what makes it drive because this is being rotated by the engine and then it rotates that. So what happens a lot of times is this shaft here gets rusty. See how it's a little dirty on the outside? Well, this already has grease on it. You know, it's got a little trail of grease. So that's what you want to look at. And this one actually looks good. It's already been treated. So we're not really going to do anything with that. It's, you know, it's got grease on it, the whole travel that it needs to have. So, you know, right now we're just verifying that that's in good shape. And the chain's looking pretty good. There's actually no grease fittings down here anywhere. This is a, a fairly simple operation down here. We can, uh, I'm gonna squirt out a little bit. We'll put a little WD-40 on there. And out here where the, I believe these are just bushings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just bushings for that axle shaft. Now, when you're doing this, you don't, you don't want to get any lubrication on here because that'll make the tires not drive. That'll create, that'll create slippage. You don't want that. And we'll put a little bit on these out here just in case it may do some good. Another purpose for lubing this stuff up so these turn easier, it makes it easier to push when it's not running because this did have a, a little bit of resistance to rolling. So if you lube all these points up in here, it's going to make it push easier if you get to the one that's causing the, the friction. So now we're going to put this cover back on because everything else in there looks pretty good. We're going to lube up that pivot point up there so that spring can pull the, uh, the chute back up better. This pivot right here is pretty rusty. And it's keeping this from coming back up all the way, I believe. Yeah, now she's coming up all the way. Much better. A little bit of lubrication on these things makes a big difference. Now, we'll take that screw out. There's a gear under here. I want to lube that up. Now we're going to look at this a little bit. It's not really a problem, but while it's in the shop here, we're going to lubricate it a little bit. So we're going to try to lubricate this pivot here and where the shaft goes through. Now for this stuff here, I want something a little bit thicker than WD-40. So I'm going to, I'm going to use chain lube. Penetrates, lubricates, extends chain and sprocket life by Lucas. Not sponsored. So by using chain lube here, it's going to cling to the parts better. And you want to lubricate everything that, that rotates here. Anything that's moving, you want to get some lube on that. And it's really going to make a big difference as you'll see here coming up. Well, you can hear the, the reduction in friction already on that. That's moving like there's no resistance now. Except for that cable dragging, you hardly even hear it. We're going to put it in here and it's eventually going to seep its way down through there. And I kind of like that. It's going to lay in here and gradually go down through that tube. It's nice that they have this sealed up so well because rain can get down through there. On a cheaper model, that's usually a problem and it breaks the cables. But this being a Toro, it's a little bit better model. Yeah, that thing moves nice now. So now we're going to work on lubricating the pivot for this, which I could have done with it up in the air. It would, would have been easier to see. And we're going to, I think that popping sound is the end of this lever here. We're going to put some right down on that. And that's going away too. Let's get some in here. We'll put 
a little bit on this. The bottom of that rod. Now up here at the operator station, you want to lubricate all these controls because it's going to cut down on fatigue while you're using the machine. And like I promised, we're going to pull this spark plug out. Just because it's rusty on top, we're going to take it out and look at it. If it looks good on the inside, I'm putting it back in. Because the rust really does not have anything to do with making spark. And it's not going to hurt it on the outside. Here you can see this spark plug looks fine on the inside. It's got a lot of life left on it yet. So it's going to go back in. All right, the intake looks pretty good. I think it's usually the exhaust one that has all the heat that causes the problem. There we go. Well, I stopped that the first time. It wasn't closed all the way. But now I can't spin it with the screwdriver. And, um, you know, I discovered that trick a long time ago. With the spark plug out on the flathead engine, you can see both the valves. Let's see if we can get that visual here. So on the flathead engine, that's the exhaust valve there. And that's the intake valve on that side. Not sure how it's picking it up, but down in there is the intake valve. And if they're not closed all the way, you can rotate them with a screwdriver. You can actually put a screwdriver in there and you can rotate those. So you want to keep rotating the engine until it looks like they're closed all the way. And uh, the intake was easy. I got that one right away. The exhaust, it looked like it was closed. And, and I could rotate it with the screwdriver real easy. It was not on the seat. So I rotated the engine a little bit farther. And then it, it went down against the seat. So it didn't rotate. So luckily, both the valves are closing all the way. It's a pretty common situation where I, I think it's usually the exhaust valve seat. It sinks down in a little bit. And to fix that, you could tear the block apart and put a new seat in it. Or you could uh, semi-tear the block apart, take the valve out, and you know grind a little bit off the stem so that you get the proper clearance between that and the cam so that it closes all the way. So one last thing you always want to check on these snow blowers is to make sure that these augers are not rusted fast. See, that needs to rotate on that shaft like that. And both of these are doing that. Now, you won't be able to spin it because uh, that shaft there has to turn to make this shaft turn. So you're not going to be able to spin this. But it needs to be not, not stuck on that shaft. And these here should be special shear bolts. And it looks like it is. Because it doesn't look like there's a hardness rating on this head. And, uh, you know, th this has a... Yeah, I don't feel anything on there. It has a lock nut on there, a nylock nut. Because uh, you don't want that to vibrate loose and fall out. So it, it sure looks like those are shear bolts that are in there by looking at the markings. The, the owner may know one way or the other if they are for sure. It's, it's really, really hard to tell with that. I guess I should take one out and look at it. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull this one out because it's easy to get. So now this is something you're going to want to do if you just bought the snowblower used or something like that. You're going to want to make sure that there are actual shear bolts in here. Because a lot of times people will just put regular bolts in here if they don't have shear bolts or maybe they don't know any better. But the problem with putting regular bolts in here, if you get a rock or something jammed up in here, that this bolt 
proper shear bolts are designed to break so that you don't break the gearbox. And this is actually a regular bolt. It's a regular grade five bolt, not a shear bolt. So that's bad, that, that's not good. Should not be regular bolts in there. See, they, they rotate. They're not stuck on there. So, yeah, both of these bolts are regular bolts. They do not belong in there. So, as part of doing a service for this guy, for anybody, you need to check that. And uh, we're going to have to go out and we're going to have to get shear bolts because, uh, you know, I can't give this back to the customer in a condition where it could break. Because, you know, even if they know that they're not the right bolts and, and they get something jammed up in there and it breaks their gearbox, they're going to say, well, you just did a service on it. How come it has the wrong bolts? So we're going to have to take care of that. Well, I just happen to have 516 shear bolts here. So let's see. I do believe they're going to be the right ones. Yeah, they line up. This is where the nut was, and that's where the nut's going to be. So luckily, I have a pair, a couple of shear bolts. We're going to be able to get this done, get it out of here. These should turn free. You don't, you don't want to squeeze that shaft on there. That should move back and forth like that. So that it's not locked onto that center shaft. So that's going to do it for our Toro snowblower service here. Luckily, it didn't really take too much couple shear bolts, a little carburetor cleaning, a lot of lubrication. Didn't need any belts, so this was an easy one, luckily for the customer. He didn't want to have to spend a whole lot of money on it, and I'm confident that it's going to work for him and not have any trouble. If you like these kind of videos, you know, like and subscribe. A subscribe really helps. Let lets me know that people are actually watching these and, and that they appreciate what's going on here. You know, maybe the next snowblower video will get into more stuff. You know, that probably would be one of mine that I'd be getting ready to sell maybe. There'll be other ones coming and we're gonna get into more things and uh, you know, hopefully can learn a lot more here. We'll see you in the next video.